wonder about the Holy Spirit. We hear about God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit, but often the Holy Spirit is what we don't talk about very often. It's a little harder to pin down that person of Jesus and of God that comes from God. And so today we take a look at that conversation. We begin with a call to worship. Jesus promised, I will ask the Father who will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth, the world cannot accept, cannot accept as they do not see or know him, but you know him. He lives within you and with you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Sing with us now, when long before time. adoration and confession. Let us pray. Loving Father, we gather to celebrate your presence with us, to offer you our praise and our prayers, our love and our obedience. Through the gift of your own spirit, you abide with us and in us. We rejoice in your love for us and in the life we have been given through the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ. Open our eyes to recognize your presence here among us, Open our hearts to the love that you have for us. Open our minds to the truth you would reveal for us. We admit, knowing God, that from plastic cards to websites, from handheld devices to stock options, we are surrounded by a variety of gods who demand our worship. We can all too easily believe that work is our life and that wealth is the reason for our being and that success is the very air we breathe. Forgive us, God of mercy, you are not found in a computer chip, but in the child who holds our hand. You are not a chatbot note, but the word that can transform our very lives. You are not a disembodied, constantly recalculating voice, but the one who calls us to life through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Despite everything we do, God loves us. 
This is why we can dare to hope. This grace is why we can dare to hope. We will witness to this hope in every word we speak to every person we meet. Thanks be to God, we are forgiven. Amen. Hear now a word from the Gospel of John. A scripture reading of John 14, verses 15 to 21. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphan. I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. How will I know if he really loves me? I say a prayer with every heartbeat. I fall in love whenever we meet. I'm asking you what you know about these things. How will I know if he's thinking of me? For some, this might have been a Whitney Houston flashback as it was released on her solo debut album back in November of 1985. Though the song is definitely a pop song that has nothing to do with God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, this part of the chorus echoes a number of questions in conversations that I have had, particularly of late. This seems an especially appropriate conversation, given that Pentecost is next Sunday, in which we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit to believers and for the church worldwide. In the Statement of Faith of the Presbyterian Church in Canada called Living Faith, the following affirmations are written. The Holy Spirit is God with us, enables people to believe, and forms and equips the church. The Holy Spirit is God with us, the Holy Spirit enables people to believe, and the Holy Spirit forms and equips the church. In the scripture reading, Jesus says that he will not leave us orphaned. Now it may be helpful to give a little background to this reading. The setting is the last supper that Jesus knows he will share with his disciples. Though they have, though they know something is up, they have no idea what comes next. Jesus' arrest, trial, and crucifixion. They certainly have no idea about resurrection, even though Jesus has tried before to warn them about what was in store, or what is in store. They were not ready to hear it. Even now, they cannot comprehend why Jesus is talking so. In chapter 14 of the Gospel of John, Jesus' words are confusing to the disciples. We have the benefit of history and the whole story, and in fact, this gospel is written for a people who never encountered Jesus at all, who likely never encountered them anyway, as the account was written sometime after Jesus' death. But in that moment, we hear of a group of people who loved Jesus deeply, had given up family and livelihoods to follow him, And Jesus, knowing what they will face in the coming days and in the future, speaks words of what he hopes and desires will be words of comfort, if not in the present moment, in time to come, when they and us now reflect on those words. So Jesus says, God will give another advocate to be with them forever, the spirit of truth that those who love Jesus and keep his commandments to love God and love others will know because the spirit that they will know that advocate because the spirit abides with them and will be in them. We are included in that them. Those same promises given to the disciples in that upper room are long standing and are for us as well as they were written and passed on 
to those for whom this gospel was written. Jesus was the first advocate sent by God, God in the flesh. These words we use to describe this abiding as God incarnate, God with us. Now that Jesus' earthly life will end, believers will not be left alone. We will not be abandoned. We will not be left orphaned. Another advocate will be given to us. This is the spirit of truth. The spirit of truth continues in the world and the way believers can know and trust it is by loving Jesus and keeping the commandments to love God and to love others. It is through this trust and way of life that we will see Jesus and we will live. As Christians, we believe that Jesus lives and because he lives and promises the Holy Spirit, we can trust that we are not left as orphans. But what does that mean? As the song goes, if this is about our love for Jesus and Jesus' love for us, our love for God and God's love for us, how will we know that God really loves us? How will we know that the promised Holy Spirit really is with us? Well, we don't have the benefit of seeing Jesus in the flesh. But we have the words and experiences of Christians from the early disciples to those who continue to witness to their faith today, as well as what we may have experienced and what we know for ourselves. Some of the most beautiful conversations I was privy to this past week was people sharing experiences of how they knew that the Holy Spirit was at work in their lives, from traveling and feeling that they were never alone, that someone had their back through any challenges, to others experiencing welcome in a congregation that when they reflected on it, they knew it was God who had led them there. For some, it was like audible words that they heard in their heads about God's presence in a moment, in a place, or God's presence being able to be seen everywhere and in everyone. Moments where fear was removed and replaced by calm. Moments of chaos and confusion that still had the presence of peace within them. Always that sense that there was a guide, a hope, a peace, and for some, a very presence what God, what Jesus calls an advocate. So how will we know the Holy Spirit? First, it takes practice and paying attention to what is going around, on around and within you. And love. Love is the identifying characteristic of God, of Jesus, and so also of the Holy Spirit. It is why this scripture opens with, if you love me, Love is not just a feeling. It is more so in the Christian faith. Faith is, it is an action. Love is an action. If you love, then you will want to act on that love. You will share it with others in ways that are compassionate and just. Loving like Jesus means loving others. Theologian Nancy Ramsey writes, John's gospel was written in an age of empire for people surrounded by agents of the emperor, images of imposed dominion and the weapons to enforce the imperial power. We find in John's gospel this strikingly different claim about, about the power and order that love brings to life and relationships. It is difficult to imagine a sharper contrast to the imperial understanding of the way the world is or the definition of power. For Jesus, power was love. In a time when power is about control, ownership, prestige, money, and so much more, Jesus said power is love. That speaks as powerfully today as it did for the disciples in their time or for Christians for who this, whom this gospel was originally written. Where this love is shown in word and in action, there Jesus is present through the power of the Holy Spirit. Some people, and I would say most, can experience the presence of the Holy Spirit in their lives when paying attention, being expectant, reflecting on their lived experiences. But I would also say that there 
are many who experience times when God feels so distant that there is no way to discern the work of the Spirit in one's life. I've had one such experience, uh, was such time, actually. It was an extended period of time myself. Unable, even unwilling, to open my Bible to read Scripture. Not able to pray except with expletives, hurt, and anger. Upon reflection, I know it was me that had pulled away from God, not the other way around. When I did come around, turns out God used that in a way that I could not have imagined, in a way in which I now stand here as a minister. But at times, one can go can also go for a long time not knowing or feeling the presence of God and yet trusting that God is at work through the Holy Spirit. Linda Clatter writes the following. Mother Teresa of Calcutta famously left her record of a lifetime of struggle, struggle with the darkness that plagued her because for more than half her life she did not feel the presence of Christ. Nonetheless, among Christians she has been generally accepted as a modern saint. Some consider her even a greater saint because in spite of the darkness, she continued to be faithful. Even though she had not been gifted with spiritual certainty, she steadfastly pursued the mission to which she believed she had been called, and the Christian community recognized and affirmed that mission. How will we know that God is with us in Jesus, and that the Holy Spirit has been given to us. It will be by our love in action, our love lived out in service to others. It does not mean sacrificially giving until there is nothing left of yourself. Even Jesus took time for rest and renewal, time for friends, prayer, and meals. But there will still be giving of time, talent, energy, resources, knowledge, and most of all, of your loving self. This is as true for the church as it is for individuals. How will we know that the Holy Spirit is working in and through us? It will be because we choose to love others, provide for needs, create space for care, partner with those who also help others, and so many innumerable ways that speak to care, compassion, justice for those who are on the margins and oppressed, and most of all, expressing and showing the value of every human being. The Holy Spirit works in community with believers. The church has a place at the center of the Holy Spirit's work. A couple more thoughts that may be helpful that came out of conversations with others that I concur with. First, Jesus comes to us in as many and diverse ways as there are people. It is why listening to each other and helping one another discern, understand, and recognize the Holy Spirit at work in us, in our families and friends, and in our church and community locally and more broadly is so important. We learn from one another about God at work. The Holy Spirit is alive, just as Jesus is alive. We are not orphaned. Jesus has come to us even though the world does not see Jesus. We can see him, and because he lives, we also live. Because of the Spirit given to us, we can know and trust that Jesus is in the Father. We are in Jesus and Jesus is in us. We keep the commandments to love God and to love everyone as God's love is for everyone. Through those words and actions of love, we know God's love and the love of Jesus as revealed to us and the world through the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Part of the trust that we have that the Holy Spirit is at work is through our prayers. It's also how we show our love and compassion and concern in one way, one action for all of God's people. Let us pray. God of homes and families, this Sunday we give you thanks for our families, especially remembering mothers, grandmothers, great-grandmothers. We are grateful for their love and attention, their hard work and the deep hope they have cherished for each one of us. 
We honor before you each one who has mothered us and now lives with you in your eternal care. And we ask your blessing on each one in our family who continues to care for us, cook for us, and worry about us. God of connections and compassion, today we thank you for our friends and relations, for the neighbors and fellow citizens who, keep, who help to make our lives complete. We thank you for glad times shared, helping hands offered, commitments honored, and we pray for those around us facing particular challenges this day. God of courage and new possibility, today we pray for all those who feel life or love slipping through their fingers, for those who face the loss of good health, and for those who face the loss of good times. We pray for communities facing upheaval through natural disaster and human misjudgment, and for countries facing economic turbulence and environmental collapse. God of forgiveness and renewal, today we pray for those caught up in relationships in need of repair and for all who seek peace and seek to make peace. We pray for families, churches, communities, and countries caught up in division. Send your spirit to bring peace to troubled lives. And all, as those who seek peace in Jesus' name, we pray together the words he taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. In letting go of the gifts we offer, in releasing them to for God's use through the church, we let go of any attempts or inclinations to control the free and graceful activity of the Spirit in our lives. So we gather our gifts together and present them as an offering of gratitude and praise. If you consider St. Andrew's your church and would like to support our work, our ministry here with a donation, please check us out at standrewspres-tbay.ca. There you can find ways to donate and just learn more about our ministry. We've been speaking about the Holy Spirit, and so we sing about the Holy Spirit. O oh, breath of life, come sweeping through us.
Listen again to the promise Jesus makes. I will never abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Even though the world will not be able to see me, I will never vanish from your sight. And since I live, you will also live. Go from here in the knowledge that you do not go alone. The power and presence of God goes with you. Praise be to God.